Well, I gotta say, I'm already looking forward to this show's sequel. Mayor of West Town. <laughs> What's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. Now that the final episode of HBO's Mayor of Easttown is out and the show is over, today we're going to stop and talk about the show as a whole. So let me know in the comments what your thoughts on this show were if you already saw it, and make sure to hit that thumbs up button if you like these reviews as it helps me out immensely by getting my channel out there. And if you're new here, I hope you consider hitting that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with reviews of new releases, older films, hidden gems, and so much more, like TV reviews, on a near daily basis. But let's not waste any more time and let's talk about Mayor of Easttown. This stars Kate Winslet as Mayor, a detective in a small Pennsylvania town who investigates a local murder while trying to keep her life from falling apart. So, it's not often I do TV reviews on here. Basically, the way I review them is, unlike my movie reviews, which I try to keep spoiler-free, this will be a full-on spoiler video. I try to go through each episode very briefly and give my general thoughts on each of them and then give some other thoughts I had on the show as a whole towards the end. To me, that's the easiest way to do this. So, if you haven't seen Mayor of Easttown and want to know nothing, this is your spoiler warning. Go watch the show, then come back to this. But anyway, here we go. This was created by Brad Inglesby, who was also the screenwriter for films like The Way Back from last year and Our Friend, released earlier this year. Inglesby wrote every episode of the series, while Craig Zobel, who previously directed last year's The Hunt, directed every episode. And it's an entirely original story, not based on any pre-existing media. Though I will say that the concept does have some sense of familiarity to it. It's a somber detective drama taking place in a small town, mainly revolving around a murder mystery. And the lead character is this broken individual who's haunted by an unsolved case from years prior, or in this case, a year prior. This is something we've seen before. In fact, between this year and last year, there were two other movies that share that same very general setup. The Kid Detective from last year, and The Dry from this year. Both very good, by the way. But what's good with exploring this concept in a show, rather than a film, is that it allows more time to explore subplots and flesh out the personalities of side characters more, which is something you can only do to a degree in a film before it slows down its pacing altogether. But here, you have a pretty solid supporting cast, ranging from other townspeople and co-workers of Mare's, who we'll get into in a minute, down to her family, and the main three people in Mare's personal life are her mother Helen, played by Jean Smart, her daughter Siobhan, played by Andre Rice, and her ex-husband Frank, played by David Denman, who you may know better as Roy from The Office, who's almost totally unrecognizable here compared to that role. And the first episode, called Miss Lady Hawk herself, sets up a lot of those relationships pretty well, including getting a little bit into Mare's history of being part of a champion high school basketball team, as well as meeting her best friend Laurie, played by Julianne Nicholson. We also get introduced to Guy Pierce as Richard, who becomes Mare's romantic interest throughout the series. And this episode mostly takes its time until we get to the final few minutes or so. Throughout the episode, we're also following a single mom named Erin, played by Kaylee Spaney, who's getting into arguments with her baby's father, Dylan, about taking care of their child. It results in Dylan's girlfriend, Brianna, beating up Erin, who's rescued by Siobhan, and we think things are now okay with her, until we see the next morning Erin's dead body is found in a creek with a wound to her head, and the episode ends. While this introduction to everyone was a bit slower paced, things pick up with episode 2, called Fathers, where the body's discovered, and Mayor gets the case along with a young county detective named Colin Zabel, played by Evan Peters, who's brought in to help after solving another major case. Now, throughout both the last episode and most of this one, we really see the more unlikable qualities of Mayor out in the forefront. She's bitter, she doesn't exactly have great relationships with just about anyone, she keeps everyone at arm's length, and she tends to get confrontational very quickly. Which is always kind of a risky move to do with either a movie or a show, as you do want your audience to be able to connect with your characters. And while Kate Winslet is great in the role, more on her in a bit, it is a bit difficult at first to really care for Mare as a character, just because she's so hardened and seemingly cut off from everyone, which itself plays into that trope I mentioned earlier about the detective who's torn up about a case from so many years ago. Though in this episode, we get a better idea of why she is how she is, between the pressures of solving these cases, as well as the fact that she had a son named Kevin, 
man who had a mental illness and killed himself in their attic a couple of years ago. And now to make matters worse, Carrie, played by Sussy Bacon, who's the mother of Kevin's baby named Rue, is trying to fight for custody of her son, who's been under Mare and Helen's care. Which is some nice groundwork established, though things come to a head when Mare and Zabel arrest Brianna, and Mare makes a big scene out of it, leading to an uncomfortable Zabel to approach her. And after some convincing, Mare relents and begins to soften up, letting Zabel be of some help. And while there's still that gruff exterior to her throughout the remainder of the show, she does make an attempt to try being more sociable, including trying to get the nose able better and going to a party with Richard, though that doesn't go as well. And I'm glad they got ahead at making Mare more sympathetic now, even if it's only by so much, as it would have been a lot rougher to follow a totally unlikable character around for seven episodes. This is definitely a very dark show, Though, I think you still need to have some sort of balance when it comes to these sort of movies or shows. Dark can be good, but even if the subject matter is heavy, you can't make your content a totally joyless experience. You still need to have some sort of emotional core that makes you enjoy watching these characters, and we start to get that more here. And I do like the dynamic that begins to build between both Mare and Zabel thanks to some really solid chemistry between Winslet and Peters. It's also especially nice seeing Peters in a slightly different sort of role, as we're used to seeing him play jerks like an American Horror Story, or fast-talking, wisecracking sort of guys. And here, he still has this very likable nature to him, but this time, he's a bit more nervous, and even socially awkward to a degree, which made for a nice contrast to the more aggressive mare. And it even made for some very light moments of humor that cut the tension a bit in this otherwise dark drama. Now this episode ends with a few big moments, including Aaron's father kidnapping and shooting Dylan, as well as a rumor circulating that Frank, who briefly taught Aaron in school, could possibly be the real father of Aaron's kid. And both of these things become the focus of episode 3, called Enter Number 2, with Dylan surviving the shooting and Frank denying any relationship with Aaron. Though we do get more pieces of evidence thrown our way, including Aaron's finger being found in a park, which wasn't where her body was found, her bike being missing, and that the town's deacon, Mark, played by James McArdle, was the last person Aaron called the night of her death. And we see that Deacon Mark had thrown Aaron's bike into the river, though that's unknown to the detectives. But nothing leads to any major breakthroughs just yet yet, with this episode instead ending more on a personal note for Mare, who tries to prevent Carrie from gaining custody of the baby by planting drugs in her car, leading to Mare being put on administrative leave when her boss finds out, and is once again her more unlikable side really coming out to the forefront, which truthfully I wasn't a big fan of at first, though we do get more into that later. Now, I actually didn't watch these first few episodes week by week. I was interested in checking it out when I first heard of it prior to the premiere episode, but I didn't get to sit down with it until after the third episode aired, and I binged all three. And I gotta say, while it's fun to air murder mystery type shows in a weekly format, as a personal preference, I feel with the pacing of this show in particular, this lends itself as something better off binged. Not because I found the show boring or paced poorly for the most part or anything, but there's a restrained approach to it overall that does ultimately work in its favor as it does lead to some nice character building and I was interested to see how things would play out for everyone, but because of that approach it wasn't like there was something that had my heart racing or on the edge of my seat as each episode ends. I wanted to know what was going to happen but not because my mind was blown after every episode or anything. This is a show that doesn't really rely on bombshell revelations or big reveals, especially in these first few episodes. There are some, but more on those in a bit. But even though we get a decent amount of stuff regarding Eren's murder, and these episodes do end on some sort of cliffhanger, our attention is split equally between the murder and all the character stuff. And by three episodes in, we're starting to get some ideas of where things are headed, but nothing totally concrete yet. And outside of a couple of episodes, that's pretty much the pacing of this show as a whole. And I say this as less of a criticism, it's more like if I had to pick which was the best way to watch a show like this, I'd say binging it probably is the better experience than the weekly format. But anyway, things keep moving with episode 4 called Poor Sisyphus, and from here on out, I was watching the show weekly, Sunday nights with everyone else. Here, Zabel takes over the case, though with Mayor still consulting him unofficially, and we learn that Deacon Mark was transferred to Easttown due to allegations from his previous parish, and we also learn that neither Frank nor Dylan are actually the father of Aaron's baby. Though those are the only big revelations we get from most of the episode until the end, which I'll get to in a second, as this is once again a lot more focused on character-oriented material. 
burial. Mare gets caught between being asked out by both Richard and Zabel, while also letting Drew stay with Carrie for one night, though getting him back quickly. We also get a look more into Siobhan's personal life, as she ends her relationship with her girlfriend Becca, and begins seeing a DJ at her school named Anne, which leads to a brief love triangle that ends uncomfortably with Becca lying to Helen in order to be let into the house. And an argument ensues, and Helen winds up in the hospital, though with no serious injuries. We also get some more insight into Mare's relationships with Kevin and Carrie, both of whom had robbed her for drug money which gives a little more insight into why Mare is willing to do what she did to Carrie in the previous episode. Not that I agree with what she did, to be perfectly honest. Though again, it's all solid character work throughout this episode for the most part. Nothing huge here, but the show does a nice job of giving us a better look at everyone, and all the performances thus far have been top-notch. Though this episode ends with probably one of the biggest cliffhangers so far. We see another girl named Missy get kidnapped, and she's imprisoned in an attic with Katie Bailey, whose unsolved disappearance from a year prior is the one that that's been troubling Mare all this time. And things get a lot more interesting going into episode 5 called Illusions, which I'd say was probably my favorite episode of all. I think this was the most consistently intense of the bunch, as we now have three people who either disappeared or were killed, and the pressure is mounting for something to be done about it, especially as it's unknown to the characters and to the audience if all three are connected in some way. And you find out a few interesting things. You have Dylan burn Erin's journals, though Erin's friend Jess keeps one of her photos. You find out that Deacon Mark did drop Erin off at the park the night of her death, though he insists he didn't kill her, and you have Mare and Zabel tracking down the man who kidnapped at least both Katie and Missy, a man named Wayne Potts, who had unsuccessfully tried kidnapping another girl earlier, and when Mare and Zabel approach Potts, the other two girls make their presence known, which leads to a shootout with Potts killing Zabel, followed by Mare killing Potts. And that was easily the most shocking ending of all the episodes, mainly because it was the most intense of the bunch, and also just because it was probably one of the biggest bait and switches of this show so far. Usually the rule is, if a bigger name's in the cast, they're gonna have some huge importance by the end of the show or the movie, and I'd argue that Evan Peters is easily one of the biggest names here. So even though there are only two episodes left by this point, which does mean it's pretty close to the end, you'd think he'd have even more significance to the story all the way till the very last episode, but that ended up being some nice subversion of expectations there, killing him off at this point in the story. And even though it was shocking, it didn't feel like it was done just for the sake of shock value. By this point, it was becoming clear a lot of the stuff involving his character building was coming to an end anyway. He goes on a date with Mare, and she's way too invested in the case to talk about anything else with him, which ends that storyline after they were slowly building it up over the last few episodes. Plus, he reveals not too long before they approach Potts that he really didn't solve the big case that made his career, and that was the only other major thing about his character. So while it was sad to see him exit the show here, if he were to have stuck around, he probably would have just been relegated to more of a stock character for the final two episodes, or he'd help but with his arc basically being fulfilled. Plus, this does add to Mare's character as well, as in episode 6, called Sore Must Be the Storm, Mare attempts to talk to Zabel's mother, only to be rebuffed and blamed for his death, which pushes Mare to break down and essentially confront the worst parts of herself, in a nice emotional scene that I thought was really well done. And I'd say this is probably the second most consistently intense episode right after the fifth one, building off the momentum from the previous episode. While the other two disappearances are solved, there's still the question of Eren's murder, which at this point we're led to assume was done by someone totally separate from Potts. So now we're led down a few different possible directions. Mare's put back on the case and arrests Deacon Mark after discovering Aaron's bike. Meanwhile, things aren't looking great for Dylan either, with Mare being told his whereabouts were unknown for part of the night of the murder, leading Dylan to intimidate Aaron's friend Jess. But we also learn that Aaron had some involvement with the Rosses, which is the last name of Laurie's husband John and his family. And Laurie approaches Mare and tells her that her brother-in-law Billy, who was otherwise a fairly minor character up until this point, but was also Aaron's cousin, is the one that killed Aaron after confessing to John. All while that's going on, a lot of the other character stuff ramps up, between Mare about the loser grandson, while Siobhan is placed in a conundrum as she gets accepted into Berkeley College, which is where she wanted to go, but she initially decides against it to be with Anne, who then cuts off contact with her as to not hold her back, which was another nice emotional character moment. 
But things end on another great cliffhanger as Jess hands in a photo from Aaron's journal at the same time as Mare goes to confront the Ross brothers while they're on a final fishing trip. And then things cut as Mare's boss tries getting into contact with her before she gets to the Rosses. This was definitely one of the more on the edge of your seat type endings, especially because it seemed like there had to be more to this than revealing everything early on in this episode. And sure enough, in the final episode, called Sacrament, it's revealed that the photo was of Aaron and John, and he's actually the father of Aaron's baby. John's arrested by Mare, and he says he's the one who killed her during an argument, and that he and his brother moved the body. This gets Deacon Mark off the hook, and it looks like everything's been resolved. Or so it seems. In one shocking final twist, when Mare receives a complaint from one of the other townspeople named Mr. Carroll, he reveals that his gun went missing for a few hours the night of Aaron's murder. And after pulling up some footage from security cameras, it's revealed that John and Laurie's son Ryan had snuck into the barn that night. And it turns out, He's the killer after all, after an attempt at scaring Aaron away from his father goes wrong and he kills her in the struggle. And this becomes something of an ironic ending for Mare, who, after struggling throughout this entire series with the death of her son, now has to be the one to take another son away from his mother. In this really emotional moment where we see Ryan confess to everything, which results in Laurie and Mare's friendship ending. And while that solves the murder case, as I said earlier, this is actually more interested in the character side of things rather than just being a whodunit. So the show ends on a much more thoughtful note in the weeks after Ryan's arrest, with people moving on. Deacon Mark returns to church, Richard leaves for a new job for a year, and Siobhan decides to go to Berkeley after all. Plus we see Mare in therapy, and she's asked if she's ready to confront all of her grief that's been hanging over her head this entire time now that the cases are solved. We see her relationship with Helen get better, she makes some men's with Laurie, she gets control of Drew after Carrie backs off, and even things seem okay with Frank, as he remarries but invites Mare to the wedding, and they're on good terms. But the final shot is of Mare going into the attic where her son had committed suicide after having refused to do so all this time. It's a quiet moment, but honestly, that was the best way to end the show. This has been a series that's more about exploring themes like confronting your past and dealing with grief, and I thought that those were explored beautifully here, as we see not just Mare, but plenty of characters either attempting to run away from their demons or confront them, whether it be head-on or trying to deal with them silently. Everything between Zabel confessing to Mare about his role in the case he solved, to Mare confronting her mother about issues they've had in the past, to Deacon Mark trying to deal with his allegations, to the the Ross's complicated history, and more. And I thought everyone did a great job here. Most of all, Kate Winslet, in what's easily her best role in years. Even though she hasn't gone anywhere or disappeared in the last few years, it feels like it's been a while since we've seen her in something really layered or complex. Now, I also quite liked her a lot in last year's Ammonite, which also had her as someone with this very gruff exterior, though I'd say here, she completely knocked it out of the park. And I really hope she takes on more roles like this. Julia Nicholson in the final episode also gave one of the show's other standout performances, which I was really happy to see as she was good throughout the show, but her role did come across as a bit more thankless at times, being someone who just conveyed or received important bits of information. Though at least it was nice to see that there was some payoff to that, as it's revealed that part of it was her covering for her own family, which led to that really tense confrontation between her and Mare in the car after her son's arrest, which might have been one of the show's best moments from an acting perspective. Now, it's also a shame that Kaylee Spaney got the unfortunate role of Erin, leaving her with only so much to do, because she's a very good actress. She was great in Bedtimes at the El Royale, and she was easily one of the things holding the craft legacy together. But she was another one who gave a knockout performance, especially in the show's first episode, where her storyline leading up to her death being one of the better subplots for me in the series as a whole. And what was just nice about the series as a whole is how cinematic it truly felt. It's incredible how, in the last decade or so, just how high the quality of TV has gotten with bigger budgets, as well as directors known primarily for their film work making the jump to TV as well. And even though the pace of this felt more in line with the show, it looked absolutely beautiful. Craig Zobel did a fantastic job on this, as did cinematographer Ben Richardson. There were times where not much was necessarily happening, yet it was still just nice to look at, capturing that bleak feeling of despair that hung over this whole town. It really played nicely into the show's themes. But now, if I had some criticisms for the show as a whole, I'd say the pacing was the one big thing. Again, I didn't find it to be too slow or anything overall, but maybe not everything was as consistently engaging as I would have liked. Sometimes it's difficult with shows like this where there's a huge ensemble cast because sometimes you cut away from something really intriguing and you don't revisit it for quite some time and whatever it is that you're focused on just doesn't grab you as much and it tends to happen. 
But it did lead to another issue I had where a couple of the storylines didn't feel like they were properly resolved or didn't come together in the way that I would have liked. There were a few characters here who either were just there for so many episodes and then suddenly played a big part in later episodes, or on the opposite end, they served a purpose for only so many episodes early on, and then after that purpose was filled, it was like they weren't 100% sure what to do with them. Because it's a small town and it's not like they could just disappear. Like for example, Siobhan's story ended on a nice note with her leaving for school, but it didn't seem like they knew much of what to do with her after a few episodes in. Like, the romance with Anne ends almost as quickly as it began, for example, and her contributions to the story felt very minimal. Other small characters like Dylan, his storyline fizzled out pretty quickly once all the pieces of the puzzle came together, after he served as this one giant red herring through much of the show. Though Guy Pierce was the one who probably went most to waste as Richard. It was actually funny, as he was one of the other really big names in the show, so of course the rumor mill kept circulating, almost as soon as I can remember, that he had to have had some involvement in the murder case in some way. Because why focus on him, right? But it turned out he was just this nice guy who wanted to give Mare some semblance of normalcy after a shaky past couple of years, which I actually like that about him. It just didn't always feel like he was given much to do in a lot of his scenes. Like, they didn't need to be these really sappy sequences or anything, but sometimes it felt like he was just there to pop in after a really big moment to say something warm, but it's not like he exactly added a whole lot, to be quite honest. If anything, his nicest moment for me came in his last scene, when he leaves and he says the job's only for a year and he tries to keep the idea open that he and Mare will be back together afterwards. I actually like this scene. I was just kind of upset that it came during a moment that I found to be a weak end to his story. But despite my issues with pacing and its use of some of the characters, it really was a nice watch overall. And it's especially nicer as you let it settle with you. The way this was advertised, it felt like it was going more for the feel of this nerve-wracking, hard-boiled, explosive whodunit week after week. And when you realize that that's not what it primarily is, it does throw you off a bit. But the fact that it's not that proves to be one of its better qualities. Like I said, not every character may be fully utilized at all times, but it was definitely nice to explore the ones who do get utilized more consistently, especially Mare herself. The show's exploration of grief, trauma, and regret, all having to be balanced with this mystery hanging over everyone's heads, made for a solid, and at times, deeply emotional watch. Mare of Easttown is a captivating show, but not for the reasons you think. Instead of being an explosive thrill ride episode after episode, it mainly worked more as a restrained exploration of confronting one's past demons, just with a murder mystery in the backdrop. While it does have some slight pacing issues, it mostly does a great job of holding your attention with some beautiful camera work, an intriguing story, and an excellent lead performance by Kate Winslet, who is at her best in years here. I enjoyed it a lot, and I found it to be worth watching. Mayor of Easttown gets an 8 out of 10. So let me know, did you see Mayor of Easttown, or are you planning to see it, and what were your thoughts? Did you find it suspenseful? Do you have a favorite Kate Winslet performance? Let me know in the comments below so we can discuss. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it, and for more movie reviews and film discussion, please make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay updated. Thanks for watching everyone, and keep having fun with film and TV.